Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is part two of A Wild Encounter. Enjoy. You had a feeling that your escape attempt was going to be just that, an attempt. And yep, sure enough, you were tackled to the ground in less than a second after you tried to run. You cheated, Inosuke shouted. I demand a rematch. Okay, as soon as you put your boar head back on, you said, looking back over your shoulder at him. He blinked at you for a second and then looked back over his own shoulder to see his head just lying there on the ground, its fur whipping around a little bit as it accumulated snow. My head! He shouted as he jumped off you. As soon as he got off, you jumped up and ran again, making for the tree line ahead. I'm going to be stuck with this idiot if I'm not careful, you thought as you ran for your life. You thought you heard shouting behind you, but you ignored it and kept on, praying that you'd be able to move a little easier under the trees where the snow wasn't as thick. As soon as you reached the tree line, you ducked in behind a tree, quickly weaving your way through them. <sighs> Have I lost him? You thought with surprise when you weren't tackled again. <sighs> I didn't think it, I would lose him so quickly. <sighs> as soon as you looked back and then looked forwards again, a sudden thing dropped down in front of you, weapons on display as he cackled manically. Coming through! He shouted as he charged at you. Reflexively, you raised your daggers that you still held in your hands and fought him off. You're the strongest, okay? You shouted as you fought him. Leave me alone. I don't want to fight you. But he was deaf to your cries and kept on swinging. If I don't do something dramatic here, I might die, you thought for the second time in that half hour for the day, and you looked up overhead for the perfect branch. Knowing you had a good aim, you continued to fight him until you had positioned yourself under the perfect branch and then you looked up overhead and threw your dagger with force at a specifically chosen branch, stabbing right into the core of the wood and making it splinter immediately and come crashing down with the weight of the snow resting heavy on the leaves. An Oscar had been so focused on fighting you that the branch landed on him before he had a second to process what was going on, and all you saw was a leg and one katana poking out from underneath a mound of branch and snow that now lay before you. Good, you thought with relief, when there was no movement for a second. But then you felt bad. I don't think he actually wanted to hurt me. I think he literally wanted to just fight, as in he saw it as a game, but it was getting annoying. You thought, as your brows furrowed with annoyance. Feeling your kind aside calling to you, you reached forwards and grabbed for one of the side branches of the fallen limb and yanked at it, dragging it off the smushed Inosuke. Listen, you said sternly as you stood over the crumpled being on the ground. You are being really annoying. Stop trying to fight me. Inosuke groaned and sat up, then pulled his boar head off and you saw blood trickling down his pretty face. Oh, you said with sorrowful surprise. I'm so sorry. I, I know I dropped the branch on you, but are you okay? Mm. He grunted, and you stood there awkwardly for a bit before feeling like you should just go. Um, okay, I'm gonna go now. Good luck, you said, as you looked towards the end of the fallen branch and reached for your dagger at the end there, and then pulled it free from the wood. Turning slowly, you left and started heading off towards your home again, not bothering to look back. I hope he's gonna be okay, you thought. But that was the last thought that you had as you focused your thoughts on home then. Trudging on, you had all but forgotten about Inosuke when you happened to glance back and were surprised to see him following behind you at a distance. Do I wait for him? You wondered. If he's going to be calm, I don't mind him coming along, but what about his family? Where are they? The more you thought about him, the more you wondered about him, until you were just about to turn around and call out to him when all of a sudden you were knocked to the ground again. Inosuke! You shouted into the wind and snow. You were about to yell all kinds of things at him when you heard a sudden roar and looked up. Through the blizzard, you could see a giant black bear ambling towards you with its teeth bared. You froze, sudden flashbacks of your dad protecting you the same way the day he lost his life, reeling in your mind. Inosuke! You said again, this time your voice trembling, fear gripping every inch of you as he stood over you. You heard some kind of growl come from him, above you, and then he was gone, shooting forwards towards the oncoming bear with zero fear. You lay there in the snow and watched as he obliterated the bear, avoiding its attacks easily and adding his own well-placed hits with his katanas until the bear, ragged and slashed, backed off and disappeared back into the blizzard. Relief and sadness washed over you and you burst into tears, pulling yourself up off the ground but crying your heart out as you remained on all fours. Why are you crying? Inosuke asked, rather insensitively, as he appeared by your side again. My... my... my dad... 
a bear. <laughs> Thank you, you sobbed, only just giving the absolute bare minimum to him, but he didn't seem to mind. It's gone, he said, and you nodded and sniffed heavily, wiping your eyes of the water before it froze on your face. Slowly you got to your feet, still sniffing as you looked down. Let's go, to your house, Inosuke said, still not really reading the room as he turned and started heading off into the thickest part of the trees. Wait, wait, but you don't know where to go, you said to him, jogging a little to catch up. Yes, I do. It's this way. I can smell your family, he said nonchalantly as he continued on. You, you what? You asked. This way, he implored, ignoring your question. Not much more was said on your journey, and surprisingly it was only a few more hours that you emerged from the tree line and saw your house ahead. Home, you gasped with surprise. But how did we get here so quickly? It was going to be another day of walking. I bought us straight here. You must have been walking in a circle before, he said plainly, and you tilted your head quizzically at his back. Do you know these woods well, you commented as he started to walk towards the house. I was raised here by my boar parents. My real parents were eaten by a demon, he said bluntly, and you recoiled in surprise. Jeez, he said that so calmly, you thought, but you didn't say anything else. To your front door, he marched and knocked on the sturdy wood. Is that you, Yin? Your mum called from the other side of the door. No, it's me, Inosuke. Hashibira, Inosuke called, and you slapped your hand to your face. Oh, good lord, you groaned. Yes, mum, it's me, you called, trying to pull Inosuke out of the way a little bit, but he refused to budge. Your mum opened the door and had much the same reaction as you when you'd first met Inosuke. She screamed. Mum, mum, it's okay, he's fine. He saved me and brought me back home. The boar head thing is uh, a him thing, D don't mind him. You rambled quickly, trying to calm your mum down from behind him. Um, well, um, your mum fumbled, trying to regain her composure. Come in, Mr, um, Inosuke, Hashibira, he announced again. You'll hear that a lot, you deadpanned, as he stepped towards your mum, and she stepped back in fear, and he walked straight into your house. Inosuke, take your shoes off, you shouted at him. Ah, oh, he said, quickly taking them off and leaving them there on the floor. Ugh, you groaned, doing yet another face palm. He was raised in the bush, you explained to your mum. Well, that explains a lot, she mused, giving you a welcome home hug. Inosuke stayed for dinner that night. Your two older brothers were very wary of him and kept a close watch, concerned that he was going to do something to you, but he seemed to be too preoccupied with food and the inside interior of a house. You assumed it had been a while since he'd been inside an actual house. As night time fell, you prepared for bed and helped to set up a sleeping spot in the lounge for your temporary guest. Um, you'll sleep here tonight, you said to him, as you placed a pillow down at the head of the makeshift bed. Where do you sleep? he asked. In my room, you replied. I sleep with you then, he said, standing there still with boar head on. I beg your pardon, you screeched at him. Inosuke is something else. Stay tuned for next week, part three. I'll see you then.